Now we run into the matching law, the kryptonite to behavior analysts because it involves an equation. Really, the rule is, if Excel doesn't do it, we don't do it. <laughs> and I don't know how to set up a formula for matching law in Excel. But the gist of the equation really says that you'll get a proportional number of responses allocated to different discriminative stimuli, different signals in the environment, based on the perspective uh, rates of reinforcement. So your big R's are your responses, your little R's are your rates of reinforcement. So if you have a student in a classroom and the student screams really loud frequently throughout the day, one of the staff members in the room 100% of the time provides attention to that screaming. Another staff member when they're working with that student provides attention, let's say 50% of the time. You're gonna see with, you know, and I'll talk about bias in a second and generalized matching law, you're going to see more allocated responses to the higher rate of reinforcement proportionally to the two rates, meaning twice as often they're going to allocate responses towards one individual, that individual at 100%, than they do with the individual for 50%. Matching law is all about different choices and signals in the environment. Uh, Hernstein did an amazing article back in 1961 about two keys with concurrent operand schedules, meaning that each key was paired with a different schedule of reinforcement, but they ran simultaneously. He discovered that a pigeon would allocate its key pecking responses uh, proportionally to the rate of reinforcement provided for each schedule. Now, how do we apply that today? How do we see these things? Really, all life is is a whole bunch of simultaneously functioning, even though it's redundant, concurrent operant schedules. That's what we have to do every single day. We have a million concurrent operant schedules running. Each person can be a different SD or discriminative stimulus for a different schedule of reinforcement. I've got an example here with three doors. Different colors, hopefully you're not colorblind. Uh, how many people would pick the blue door? That's uh, on the left here. How many people pick the blue door? Right, I haven't told you what's behind the doors. Uh, myself, I picked the purple door. But that's got to do with my history of reinforcement with my wife. I know she loves purple. I say purple door, she's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> GPS is another really good application of the matching law in everyday life. Google Maps has like changed how we do things. I know as a consultant being on the road a lot, I am totally dependent on Google Maps. And when it doesn't work for five seconds or I lose my signal, I'm, I'm done. I'm totally finished. Forget about it. But it wasn't always this way with GPS. I don't know if, if some of you remember some of the initial GPS systems. They were garbage. They were really, really bad. I remember it was about uh, six or seven years ago, my wife, my then girlfriend, but now my wife, we were driving up the, the Florida coast and it kept on telling me to turn right into the ocean. <laughs> I kid you not, I'm just like, I can't, I'm, I'm not gonna drive into the ocean. The early GPS systems got real confused around water. They didn't know what was going on. Uh, so I just had to kind of wing it and we're going, I'm like, I don't know what to do. So now, they're even more specific. I love how it tells me this route's five minutes faster and I have learned to trust Google Maps with my life. If I think I know better, I'm wrong. <laughs> but you'll see there's certain circumstances and times throughout the day or places that you're going that you might rely or use or allocate your responses to Google Maps. Going home from work almost every day, especially if it's around rush hour, I'm gonna use Google Maps. I know I need every edge I can get to get home a little bit faster. In the morning, not so much. I know my way to work. I know the traffic patterns from my learning history. I know that I'm not going to usually encounter a ton of traffic on my way. I might pull it up once I encounter traffic, but that's another SD. So you're going to see that we allocate our responses based on our learning history and, and the level and rate of reinforcement.